Oh. It's not often that the DM gets afflicted with that condition. <laughs> He's so angry. Trying the whole hold your breath trick. Good luck with that. Oh, I saw what's happened. I <laughs> talked about it. It never works. I don't know why I, I tried. And like that was able to get rid of hiccups. Uh, how do you get rid of hiccups? You, didn't you hear? There's a house episode where like apparently like if you put things up your butt, then like you get rid of hiccups. I have to get rid. I have to shove things up my butthole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the only way. What? <laughs> house told me so. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'll. I gotta be right back. Maybe it's Lucas. Bit extreme. Corey, you might have lupus. <laughs> oh, damn! I can't. I can't. I got hiccups. Okay, I'm going to try to do the rest of this with hiccups. It's going to be hilarious. Let's keep going. Okay. You guys start exploring the ground floor, pick up, ground floor in hopes to find the entrance to the basement. There is, you know, you find that all the furniture in here is brand new, the place looks clean, and there's a kitchen on the first floor and it's fully stocked if y'all want some food. And uh, behind the kitchen, excuse me, behind the kitchen there are stairs leading down to the basement. Well, I mean, she might be with her demon spawn, so, you know, two birds with one stone, I guess. On the door leading to this room, there is a note pinned. Abandoned hope, all ye who enter yet. <laughs> what does it say? Can any of us read it? All right. Yes. It's in a language you can understand. It's in common. It okay. says, you cannot hide from the shadows. You cannot run from your fate. You cannot escape my justice. Huh. That's my name is... But it's not that which you can eternal life. It seems to be in the same handwriting as a note you found... Excuse me, you found yesterday. Oh, the severed finger. I've still got that ring. Huh. Did we get the finger? Did we keep yeah, the finger? Yeah, did we turn it into a necklace? Like, by, uh... I kept the ring. I don't know about you. Maybe you kept the finger. I don't know. I'm wearing on my necklace. Oh, okay. So it's got intimidation factor now. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with her. She's got a fucking finger on her. My god hat was the urge of the game. If you hate somebody, you can give them the finger. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um... Is it locked, this door? No. You open the door, there are stairs leading down. Are they creaky, wooden, stupid stairs? No. Nope. Are they stone stairs? Mm -hmm. They're wooden stairs, but they're not creaky or anything like that. They're well-maintained. This is a nice house. Are we going to try to, like, in in interpret this message? Like, is it a warning? Like, what are we doing with this? We're just going to be like, oh, hey, cool, she left us another note. Go back there. Continue. I deploy a chicken down the stairs. Chicken! Plops up. Excuse me. Hiccups. The chicken uh, plops down all the stairs. Nothing happens to it. So just running around down there now. Yeah. All right. You follow at a sedate, quiet pace. Okay. Uh, you go down the stairs. There's a hallway. Uh, there are several more rooms down here. Here, there's like a, a cellar full of wine. There is a storage area where there's old stuff. And there's a door with a box that has been barred. I can pick locks, right? Can I try to get rid of the barred? Yes, it is one of the most easiest locks to pick. All you do is you grab the bar and you lift it up. <laughs> <laughs> All together now. Come on, together, guys. You can do it. All of us. All right. You unbar the door. Why am I the only one doing it? Yeah. <laughs> I throw the chicken inside the room. The roof. All right. Um, you open the door. 
and there's a small balcony with another staircase leading downward. It goes further? Yes. You hear quiet sobbing. Do I? I hear ghostly I sobbing. With my, I have magic orc eyes. I can see shit. What, what do I see? All right. You see, the low vaulted chamber appears to be a wine cellar, but its bottles lie shatter on the hard stone floor. Splatters of blood red wine co cover the walls and pooled on the floor. In the far corner, a woman in a wine smeared dress cowers, sobbing quiet. Hiccups. Sobbing quietly, she looks at you and screams, her eyes wide with startled fear. Actually, she doesn't look at you. She can't, she can't see you all the way up there. <laughs> She's just sobbing still. She's just sobbing I in the corner. Really rough night. She covered in wine. Rock. I throw the chicken at her. You don't see her. Oh. All right, I give it to Apothenesco. Throw the chicken at her. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, softly and, uh, what you call it, where you're not aggressive, Descend the they, uh, ask her if she needs any help. Well, you're, you're going to have to go down the stairs. You descend the stairs, and as you come down, now I can, now I can say this. She looks at you and screams, her eyes wide with startled fear, the hysterical madness fit fades quickly from her intense dark eyes. Don't laugh at my hiccups. The Corey who talks how beautiful she is. Tell us about her beauty. Hysterical madness quickly fades from her intense dark eyes. You are not mother, she says accusingly. <gasps> who are you? What, you want to see my mother? Are you my oh, mother? Hell. I am that I am. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning of the end. Um, she looks at you with her crazed eyes. G give me a saving throw. Roll a d20. You rolled a four. J Jonathan! This is the most beautiful woman you have ever known, and it is your job and duty to protect her. Charm. Well, I was already protecting the other one. This one overtakes anything, any other obligations you have. She is now the most important thing in your life. Uh. Oh, I'm in her place. And you do not want to be apart from this woman. By the way, winner? Oh, yeah, she's mm. beautiful. She has dark, hypnotic eyes. and Oh. No, I don't want to be in trance again. Don't do this to me, Corey. Actually, maybe Amaranth is immune, because she'll see it as a ghost. Yeah, I'm not... My, my bisexuality is counted out by my ghost vision. Uh... <laughs> Alright, Amaranth! might be a necrophiliac. You go downstairs! Yeah. Um, I, is Thaddeus coming downstairs? Thaddeus? Yeah, well, ugh. You I don't know I... what's going to happen when you come downstairs. If I come downstairs, Johnson's going to turn against me and like be on this woman's side now. And there's going to be a lot of drama. Well, you don't know that yet. You know, I'm going to stop telling you these things to, to everybody if it's going to uh, change your actions. <laughs> you can't metagame like that, people. Fine. Yeah, I'm going downstairs. All right. Make a saving throw. Amaranth, make a saving throw. I'm going to make... Uh... Can you roll dice yet, Am uh, Winter? No, remember All I right. said last time it didn't work. I'll roll your die for you. Seven. Amaranth gets it on the dot. You are you are not charmed. You would have failed, Winter, but you you received a gift from the Vistani. You received an amulet that protects you against the ev the evil eye. I thought we all had one. That's right. Oh, so this wait. So it decided to charm him, but it was gonna evil eye us. Well, he rolled so low that it overtook the power of the amulet. Oh. Yeah, it's only like a bonus thing. It's not an immunity thing. Yeah, it gives you a bonus, not an immunity. Remember, the Vistani said that Gabrielle had an evil eye, and that she uses it on everybody. Speaking of which, Raul now must roll his saving throw. And he succeeds. Matten doesn't need a saving throw. 
He's magical. Okay, fine. <laughs> Matten is immune to her evil eye. But it doesn't matter. A Matten runs up and goes, oh, My love! Gabrielle! I have waited so long for you! She she starts squirming back and, and says, I killed you once, Baholus! I can kill you again! Stay back! And she looks at Raoul and says, And you, Vistani! You're coming here to kill me! I know this! Yeah, Pothinesco, you put yourself in the way between, uh, between Matin and Gabrielle. Matin says, get out of my way! I hired you to be my bodyguard. Get out of here! And then I step aside because he doesn't seem to be a threat to her. She, uh, she, she is acting like he's a threat. Yeah, but she's drunk and covered in lines, so I mean, her judgment It doesn't matter. Yeah, but you're also madly in love with her. You're madly in love with her. She's a good run. I had reason with uh, Matten then. Like, she's drunk. He's under her spell. You don't know he's under her spell. God damn it. Oh, no. Jonathan, you've got to roleplay! If not, I have to take care. I have to take control of your charmed character, because your character is charmed, and thus must, has no choice but to act accordingly. As Matten rushes towards her, she cowers back and says, No, my Hollis, I'll kill you again! And Apothenesco jumps in, in front of her and puts his, uh, puts his halberd to Matten's throat and says, back off! Uh, Apothenesco, ghost Apothenesco, sir, uh, ghost Matten here needs to live or won't get paid. What are you doing? Okay, you can talk to him and I'll talk to Matten and we'll, like, try to separate them. <laughs> well, <laughs> talking to him is going to get us anywhere, but I don't know that yet. Apothenesco looks at you, Amrith, and says, I have to protect her. You don't understand. If Matten's a threat, I can't let her near him. Him near her. Pr pronouns, hiccups. <laughs> what do you say to, to Matten, that is? It's like, I don't know what's going on, but she's drunk and is afraid of you. And maybe that's why he's gotten the way. So let's... Calm down a bit. I think that this is very out of the Pothinesco's character. I think that, it's, you know, maybe he's been... Yeah, am, no, I, am I able to assume or to guess that maybe he's under, you know, trans by her? As I have experienced being powerful. trans by people. Kind of, yeah. yeah. She's the powers of the first. looks at you and says, Zebulus, I've waited so long for this moment, and now I'm denied again? At this point, the candles in the room begin to flicker. A cold wind rushes through the room. And you hear a voice. Mother! I see you have you made <clears throat> I see you have made a mess of things again. A cold voice echoes from the door. Turning, you see a copper skinned young man with dark hair, his eyes like two midnight seas dressed entirely in black, with a broad white collar. He looks like an aged version of the boy in black you saw at the carnival. He is surrounded by a pack of huge black wolves that growl menacingly. Everyone, make another evil eye check. Roar. Evil eye. The demon having the stomach powers. Oh, wait! Right. Am I doing an evil eye thing right? Amaranth! Yeah. Do you really think that's, that's really going to work? I don't know. <laughs> Do not know. I don't remember exactly what it is. There's something like this. Like, yeah, you, you're doing it fine. You're doing it fine. I'm just asking okay. you. Do you or your character actually believe that's going to work? Um, yeah, I mean, why not? We're seeing like weird magical. All right, get a plus one to your saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> you did the thing. And everyone's level to 17. Both of you, make your saving throw. You are not entranced. <laughs> By the Dakar. Raul, oh, make yeah. his saving throw. Oh god, did Raul fail? Raul fails his saving throw by one. Uh oh. The Dakar looks at all of you and says, Well, it seems I have interlopers here. Well, mother, it is time to resolve this once and for all. And the wolves move to attack. It's time for prayer. Thaddeus, you make a prayer and everybody gets plus one to hit. I guess 
You, you have been touched. Animals? Are they like werewolves? Um, they're just large you wolves. Still have hiccups? I, yes, I still have the hiccups. <laughs> Have them. The most dramatic moment. <laughs> <The> most... <laughs> Amaranth is attacking with. Did you say magic or, or regular? Uh, the regular, regular one. Okay. Apothenesco, you spear it through its belly, and as you pull out your halberd, all of its guts fall out. It falls dead on the floor. Raul does not like this, and he's going to attack you, Apophanesco, as you are sliced with his magical scimitar. Mr. GM, sir, I think I should get, like, bonus points for the Satan child with my Satan earrings, and we should just be friends. <laughs> well, you should probably just throw your magic orb thing at him, or whatever. Yeah. Should I throw the magic orb at him? Yeah, use, use the magic orb on Satan, kid. Are you serious? Because I'll do it, and then you'll be like, oh, well, it was just Josh who idea. No, 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 that's what it, that's what it was for, remember? That's what the okay, okay. Yeah. I'll throw the magic, I'll throw the magic orb him then. All right, you throw the magic orb. Him, right? Boom! It lands at his feet. When the Vistani <laughs> spear lands at the Dakar's feet, it explodes in a blinding flash, flinging cord-like tendrils of magical energy around his body. For a moment, the cords look like glowing iron chains, but they dissolve, leaving nothing behind but sulfurous smoke. What have you done?! The Dakar appears more surprised than hurt. So, you have successfully bound him to this domain. That's exactly what I was thinking! Nobody listens to me! Well, I mean... Um... Now, hold on! Something else happens. Tell me, guys, just During the blinding flash... Everybody sees a shadow that apparently there's someone else in the room that no one else has seen. From the shadows, it darts out and grabs Gabrielle and starts stabbing her over and over and over. Oh, Paul, the going to lose his shit. Yes. He is. The movement is, al is almost unseen, but in the corner of your eye, you see a shadow separate from the rest of them. You see the cloaked figure of the Midnight Slasher leap at Gabrielle, tears streaming from wild eyes. For mother and father! Ah, uh, uh, just start stabbing her. For Ocelan and for Narnia, Jester. <laughs> Mr. DM, our dire will is immune to fear. Who is? I said, are dire wolves immune to fear or you, not? You don't know. You God have no it. idea. Would you like to cast fear on them? Well, they have a negative one saving throw to fear because they're cursed at the moment. That's correct. Um, that would be one way to get rid of the ads. Yeah, and both at once. Yeah, I'll cast fear. Okay. I'll make their saving throws. The second wolf fails. The midnight slasher fails her fear, her fear roll. Okay, cool. Actually, Apothenesco, you have no choice but to attack the Midnight Slasher. Slash down with your halberd, burying your axe head into, her, into its shoulder, and the mask of the Midnight Stalker falls off, revealing a woman's face. It's a girl. Is she dead, though? <laughs> no, she's not dead. Oh. No, no. But no. she's terrified and hurt. She is dead. Everybody's a ghost. Oh, don't try to tell me that my delusions aren't real. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Out your way. But was she cute? Because if she was cute, then that was bad. <laughs> she cannot. <laughs> she cannot override your evil eyes. She does not have those powers. Our priorities. Is she cute? Uh, every woman okay, in Ravenloft yeah. is drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't I like say like you have to tell us how beautiful she is, and then like because you hadn't said it yet, and then you were saying. Like, the most beautiful you've ever seen, after, like immediately after. Okay, each one is more beautiful than. <laughs> she wears a wide brim hat, a mask, and dark fabric that seems to drink up the night. Raul will attack Matten. And he has a magical weapon, he can actually hurt him. Raul misses. Matten will attack Raul back. His head turns into a wolf head, 
and he <laughs> bites into him and gives him a chance to become a... No, wait. Matt can't infect you with lycanthropy. He's not a, a werewolf. He's a wolf wear. It's the same disease. It should work. Well, no, he'll just turn into a human. It's already a human. <laughs> Every full moon, he becomes another person. <laughs> I like that I still like being infected. It was like when I got bitten, it was, oh, you're so lucky you didn't get infected. And now it's like, it gives him a chance. The Dakar looks like uh, the odds are not turning in his favor. He unfurls his hands and poisonous snakes appear and hit the ground and start slithering towards you. The Midnight Slasher face turns into fear and she is forced to run for the stairs. Right into the demon. Oh. Yeah. Right past no, the demon no, thing. Right through the snakes! I think I should try to get away from the, the snakes. Are there snakes coming at me? Yeah, but a wolf is attacking you too. That's not good either. I should probably get away from both of these things. Um, <laughs> yeah, the flash I'm going to use my flash. I'm going to use a flash thing. I'm going to attack by like, multiple things at once. I think I'm going to use a flash thing and try to scare some of them off me temporarily. All right. Um, the flashbangs will only work against the snakes. They will not work against the wolf because the wolf is way too big. The snakes start slithering back away from the, the flashing, uh, the flashing lights and sounds. Apothenesco, you run after the midnight slasher. Roll to hit. You use the pike end of your halberd and stab her straight through the back of the neck. You pull it out. The midnight stalker falls down. Falls down. And a pool of blood forms around her. And then you wear, wear the face on his face. Amaranth, you take eight points of damage. The Dakar uses his turn to reorganize the snakes and get them turned back towards the party so they can attack it, uh, next turn. Amaranth. The wolf what? The wolf hits you. Take another five mm -hmm. points of damage as you're bitten. Now the snakes charge in. Uh-oh. Amaranth, you fall down paralyzed. Don't kill me, Corey. Matten is also paralyzed. You slam your axe head down into the back of the wolf and it collapses. You kill the snake, you chop it right in half. They hit it so hard that there's splash damage that hits the other snake. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna narrate the end of this. Because it's getting late. I'm I'm late for something. So I'm gonna narrate the end of this. Jonathan, after killing the snake, picks up Gabrielle into her arms and runs past the other snakes and out the door with her to save her life. The other snakes attack. The people that are there are doing a little bit more damage. And Raul kills Matten with his saber. Blah. The Dakar tries to chase after uh, tries to chase after his mother. The snakes disappear when the Dakar leaves, leaving you two there to uh, let the poison slowly wear off. And you are unparalyzed. Raoul goes with the Dakar to follow his commands. Apothenesco, for now, is forever trapped within the spell of Gabrielle, saving her life from her son, who is now trapped in the same domain. So, what do you two do? Loot Matten. Loot Matten. <laughs> Matten has a rapier and a bow. Do they have a bunch of gold? Huh? Oh yeah, he has all sorts of gold too. Yeah, he has he has bags of gold. He has about a thousand gold pieces on him. I'm gonna actually end the game like that, I guess. Uh, Apothenesco is entranced by the Lord of the Land. The P the other PCs <laughs> next time may go rescue him or not. I don't whatever they wish to do. Well, I certainly hope she at least puts up. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, she does that a lot. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alright right with this until I get rescued. 
Um, you guys make out like bandits. You have a thousand gold. The next day, you are able to memorize uh, detect magic, and you find out that you have a rapier plus one. Which I can't use, but she can use it, can you? Yes. I can use it. Thieves can use rapiers? Yes. Magical weapon. Better than dagger. 